Can your rain barrel do this? Today I'm going to show you how I added a solar powered pump to my rain barrel system, making it much more useful. Okay, laid out here I have all the components of my system. Eventually these will be in a nice enclosure next to my rain barrel, but it is much easier to explain them all just kind of laid out like this. This is a 12 volt solar powered system to power the pump for my rain barrel hose. And starting out, we have the solar panel itself. This is a 20 watt solar panel, nice and compact. I'll get it mounted up on my fence or somewhere like that where it gets good sun. And we have just one cable coming out of it going to this solar charge controller. This is a cool little device. It's kind of the brains of the operation here. And as you can see, it even has a little animation on it telling us right now that we have power flowing from the solar panel to the battery itself, 12.6 volts, which is great. Uh, it's not even full sun right now, but this thing is generating some power. Uh, also pretty cool, this has a couple USBs on it, and that'd just be nice for charging my phone or a device when I'm in the garden. I've even used it during some uh, power outages recently to charge my devices, so always good to have a little backup like that. And at the bottom, we have these six terminals so positive and negative for these three categories. In from the solar panel, this one's for the battery, both in and out. And the little light bulb here is for a load, which in my case is the pump itself. So I've covered the solar panel one for the battery one. We've got these wires going to the battery. Um, this is a sealed lead acid battery, like you might find in a deer feeder or something like that. 12 volt battery and it's 7.2 amp hours. So it's nice that it's a sealed lead acid battery because it won't spill or anything like that. Um, and by my math, it will take about four to five hours for this 20 watt panel to charge this 7.2 amp hour battery. Um, I will show my math in the video description just in case you, know, you have a question like, what if I want a bigger panel or I have a bigger battery, things like that. Uh, you can adjust it for your specific case. Um, then for the last one, coming to the pump itself, this is an on-demand 12 volt pump from Amazon. It's the best seller in pumps on Amazon. Had some good reviews, so I figured I would go with it. When you're looking for a pump for a, for a system like this, the key word is on-demand. So you might see transfer pumps or things like that. Those, when you apply power to them, they're running. So even if your hose is closed, that pump is just running, 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 trying to pressurize the hose. You can see this one has a pressure set at 45 PSI or 3.1 bar. So it's going to run until on this end of the pump, it achieves a pressure of 45 PSI. And then it's gonna use this little pressure switch at the top to cut itself off, which is super nice. So let's say you have your hose out with a nozzle on it. You turn on the pump. It's gonna pressurize that hose until you reach 45 PSI. And then the pump will cut off and not burn itself up. When you open the nozzle for the hose to start watering your plants or washing your car or whatever, um, it is going to sense the pressure drop on this end and it's going to automatically cut on to um, provide you with water. So on-demand pump, um, I'll put the link to this pump in the video description. I'll link all of these components. I actually got them all off of Amazon and for everything together was just about $100. So not bad at all to be using your water from your rain barrel for more than you could do with just buckets and watering cans, things like that. Um, got a few peripherals as well. This pump was the most expensive part of this system. It's about $50, uh, so definitely want to protect it. And to do that, I got this filter. Um, this will just filter any debris in the rain barrel out before it gets in our pump and tears it up. As you can see, the filter has an arrow on it showing us that that's the way water flows through so that it gets properly filtered. Um, and then we have a male fitting coming out here and it's facing a male fitting on the pump. So we need this double female connector to get them uh, hooked together. And for the fittings on the pump, this pump is actually made for liveaboard boats or uh, RVs. So it's based on a half inch line. Most garden hoses are three quarters inch. So I have some nice little brass adapters on either end that go from half inch to three quarters and just uh, screw on. When you actually put these on, so when I put this system together for real, you're gonna wanna put some Teflon tape on the threads just so that it doesn't drip and, uh, and then you should be good. So Teflon tape is probably the one component I don't have out here. Um, on the electrical side, 
a few little small bits and pieces you might need. I added a fuse to the positive wire going to the battery. This is a 10 amp fuse. How I determined that was on the actual uh, solar charge controller. It'll tell us that it's rated for 10 amps. So I just got a little 10 amp inline fuse, just like $4. So um, some cheap insurance for our nice pump and charge controller, things like that. And then just got some little clips to be able to properly put this on the battery. These are pretty nice to have. Um, and then also got some crimp fittings just to uh, get everything nice and clean. And again, I'm gonna clean this up a lot when I put it in a, um, in a nice waterproof enclosure by my rain barrel where I don't have to worry about it, but that is the overall components. I'll show you how it works now. This waterproof junction box was my splurge purchase for this project. It is super nice and completely watertight. I also paid for one of the ones with the clear lid, which are a little more, but to me it was worth it just to make sure I can check in on this system with a glance. So with a quick glance, without having to open anything, I can tell that our panel's generating. We have a small load going on it. Um, they, these come in different sizes. I sized it for this battery specifically, and you can see it fits perfect in there. It's just kind of sitting for now, and then it's got this back to be able to mount things on. Um, the antenna and small little circuit board are for another project that I'm working on and needed a little waterproof space outside for. Um, for the actual pump, I have it hooked up here. I got my Teflon tape on all the threads, cable for it, and cable for the solar panel go through this waterproof connection into the top of the box. And eventually I'm going to build a small little pump house for this down at the base of the rain barrel. For now, it's just kind of hanging out here. So here's the perk of that on-demand pump. The system is powered, but the pump is not running because the hose is already pressurized and it's turned off. As soon as I start to open this nozzle though, you'll hear the pump cut on, maybe if it comes through the video. There it goes, pumps on, because it senses that there's less pressure on this end of it. When I turn it off, there'll be a little lag as it repressurizes the hose, and then you'll hear it click off. There's that click, and now it's off. So. That's the whole, the whole perk of getting this on-demand pump. It's not running all the time. So finally, for our rain barrel hose system, we need a hose and Giraffe Tools was kind enough to send me their new ground mounted retractable hose reel. I've been testing this thing out over the past month or two just to make sure uh, that it's quality stuff and I've really enjoyed it. It's very compact as you can see, but there's actually 82 feet of hose in here because they use a half inch hose. It works really well. Uh, that 82 feet can cover my whole garden, but I can just with a quick pull have it all retract with no kinks or anything like that. So it's been really good to pair with my rain barrel system and I'll show you some more features of it as well. This thing also just looks really sleek. I like how they have packaged it up. It doesn't look like a hose or look too busy, anything like that. And as mentioned, it's 82 feet of actual hose, which is more than enough length to cover my garden. But what's really cool is they've made it rotate on this base. So it's ground mounted, you mount this base to the ground and then it rotates on it, which is important for me because if you've seen some of my garden update videos, my garden is very long and linear and I'll have this mounted near the middle of it. So depending which direction I'm going, this thing can spin. Um, it came pre-assembled too, which is great because I'm sure there are some uh, complicated hose reels out there you have to build. This one, I literally just lifted it up out of the box with the handle and was ready to go. Um, been using it for about a month and it's been working great. I uh, haven't had any kinks or tangles or anything. I can give you a peek inside. Here's a peek inside of the hose. You can see that that uh, half inch hose goes nice and compact on the reel in there and it auto organizes as it goes. This thing goes back and forth. So I think that's why I've not had any issues with it tangling or anything yet. It did come with a little leader hose as well that I'm using to hook it to my rain barrel pump. And then as mentioned, it's ground mounted. So this plate has uh, holes or notches in the corners, four of them, and you've got options. Uh, I've been using these stakes. I'm actually relocating this thing today. So I'll take a little clip of me pounding these in, but I use the stakes just to mount it to my grass. Um, but you can use these bolts again with some bolts so you can secure it to concrete, which Kind of thinking about maybe doing a concrete pad around my rain barrel system so that's always a good option to have as well 
But yeah, putting this thing in is super simple. I've just got a hammer and I can pound these uh, clips in along the notches on the side. So um, I had this in one location, decided to move it to this location and it's just that easy to put it in on the grass. Uh, like I said, I could always do the bolts into a concrete or wood base in the future, depending on what I get into. And what's nice is now I have this thing between two of my raised beds. So if I go this way with it to water this side of the garden, it follows me. And if I go this way, it follows me as well. I can set the hose to any length. If I give it one quick pull again, it goes in until uh, it stops. But again, I, I can set it at this length. I can set it at this length. So I told you guys this thing can cover my whole garden and 82 feet sounds like a lot, but I just wanna show you how far that really is. I've got the hose pulled out all the way. Uh, it's nice, they do have a little tag on here telling you when to stop because like I said, this thing comes pre-assembled. I don't wanna have to reassemble it, but I've got it pulled all the way out back in my yard. So I'm sitting here by the hose reel itself. And then the end of the hose is all the way at that wheelbarrow over there. I uh, used it to mix some concrete in my front yard and it's just been a really good um, experience with this hose so far. So I'm gonna walk all the way out here to the nozzle just to show you guys how far this really is. And what's cool is even when I have it all the way this far out to have it reel back in, you just give it a little tug and now it has me going back and it's auto organizing all of this hose. So this has saved me a ton of time with watering my plants the past uh, the past few months that I've been using it. Thank you so much Giraffe Tools for sending it. I will uh, post a link to it in the description of this video if you're interested in getting your own, but definitely would recommend this thing. I'm excited to have it for next season. I only got to use it about the last month or two of this season. So thank you guys for watching this one. Hope this was helpful and uh, like this video if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. See ya.